Another reason to select Emory Law and Mediation to negotiate your short sale is we work very closely with your realtor, whether it's a realtor that comes from our office or that we recommend or a realtor that you've selected. We work as a team. The realtor's job is to sell and market your property and our job is to negotiate the short sale. We work with you to get the documents correct. We work with the realtor to make sure that the contract has been executed properly and that there's no hidden terms or anything that might raise a red flag with your lender. That's important to you. The other reason is negotiation is not strictly about price. The negotiation also takes into account the terms of your approval. We want to make sure that you get the best possible terms from your lender, meaning number one, that you're getting a deficiency waiver. So once the short sale has been completed, you walk away owing nothing. And that is like gold. Number two, terms of the short sale are also when the property is going to close. So if you're in a situation where perhaps you have school-aged children and you don't want to take them out of your school, you prefer to wait until the end of the school year, we make sure that the buyer will agree to that and we work with the lender if we need to get an extension to allow that to happen. So don't always think of negotiation as just a price. It really impacts you in, a much, in much more ways. So negotiating your short sale is not just about the price. It's about deficiencies. It's about terms. Recently, I was working on a short sale where I had actually gotten the approval. The uh, seller was a uh, single parent and uh, in a situation where she could no longer afford her mortgage. She did, however, have received a nice income and the bank came back and said, well, we're going to either need a cash contribution or she's going to have to sign a promissory note to pay off the $40,000 difference in what she owed and the property sold for. And I reviewed her financials and determined that she did, first of all, did not have the money to pay back a promissory note and nor did she have the assets that the bank were, were considering because none of her funds were available to her. They were in retirement funds or 401ks. So I reached out to the lender and I, I fought on this client's behalf and I escalated the file to a manager and the manager reviewed and agreed with me and the seller did receive an approval with a full deficiency waiver, not asking for a promissory note or any cash contribution. That was a success. Saving her up to $40,000 and also having a deficiency as part of your short sale affects your credit more negatively because it is an ongoing obligation that you must pay. We recently had a situation, um, young couple came in, they had done a short sale, their realtor had negotiated their short sale, um, the lender was a credit union and did not waive the deficiency, which many times happens. About three or four months, they thought everything was behind them, and a process server showed up at their front door and served them with a lawsuit for the deficiency. Because they did not have a law firm representing them or an attorney review their short sale paperwork, uh, they did not realize the ramifications of having the deficiency waiver. We were, in the end, um, able to negotiate with the other law firm, Plaintiff's Counsel, and we took a $70,000 deficiency and we were able to negotiate it down to a $6,500 lump sum um, one-time payment. So while the short sale was not negotiated by us, and if we're not going to negotiate your short sale, I always recommend you have an attorney review your short sale paperwork. And that is one thing we always do at a closing, um, whether it's our short sale that we've negotiated, or if it's a short sale that we are actually closing through the title company, is we will point out to the sellers uh, whether or not they have a deficiency waiver so that they fully understand in making the decision to sell their house.